us thing. I did say this morning on Flight M45 we have as guests some members of Aquarium State Association of Nigeria, Akisan USA Incorporated. Um, they've been here for a medical mission and today on Flight M45 they're here to talk about that medical mission and of course other issues as concerns Akisan and then Aquarium State. All right, join me in welcoming my guests. All right, let's let me introduce them one after the other. Um, just right beside me, I have Dr. Catherine Takem. All right, she is the chairperson of the medical mission. Uh, you know, of the Akisan medical mission. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. All right, we also have Mrs. Itawan Ita. She is um, the national treasure, treasurer, Akisan board of trustees. Thank you so much for joining us. All Thank right. you, it's a pleasure being here. Okay, we also have Mrs. Comfort Ikwenyong. She is the liaison officer for Akisan. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, they have been in Akwaibum State to render services to humanity and this time the services they're rendering has to do with health. Um, let me begin with the chairperson of the committee. Um, why health? Why why, why um, did Akisan opt you know to serve in, in um, you know, giving back to the people through their well-being. Thank you for having us here. Um, you did say it rightly when you began by saying uh, health is wealth. If you don't have your health, nothing else matters. That is the reason why Akisan decided that this was something that needed to be uh, uh, interfaced with the communities back here. Okay. Um, and how long has this been going on? This um, project has been going on since Akisan has been in inception. Okay. 35 years. Um, we do this on an annual basis in different local government areas. And um, absolutely it's something that we deemed necessary for our people back here. Okay. All right. I believe, um, you know, giving back to people in terms of... Um, taking a look at their how to affect their well-being is one of the objectives of Akisan. Now, um, Mrs. Itawan, what are the other objectives of Akisan? Thank you so much for that question. But before I delve into that, okay. I would like to say what Akisan is. Because people hear Akisan, Akisan, but mm. the judge don't know okay. the acronym, what it stands for. Okay. Akisan is a Kwaibum State Association of Nigeria in USA Incorporated. Like my chase just mentioned, it's been inception for about 35 years now. Okay. Akisan has um, many objectives, but it is a non-profit organization. And so with that, we have a case in 39 states in America. Mm. So we have different chapters. Some chapters or states have like two chapters or even three. So we come together every year. Global is a global conference. We have okay. people all over from Nigeria and US, Asia. I mean, it's open to even our friends from other countries to come and rejoice with us. So we get together where we raise funds for different activities. Our main goal as a non-profit organization is to touch lives, impact the community positively. Okay. So as far as Akisan, we've done a lot in the ICT area training uh, hundreds of people even here in Akwaibum State. Okay. We have also given scholarships because we understand that education is very important. That increases human capacity development. So we also, like you said, health is wealth. We also come to our community because in, in America, giving back to community is a very big thing. So where you live 
influences you our environment influences us okay. and so we now bring back what we learn to come and impact our people and that of course health because health is wealth okay Without we good health, right now um, those are clips from the next yes, generation. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. So without health, there is no wealth. You have to stay alive for you to be able to go to school. So that's education. And for you to be able to work, impact your community. So that's why we delve into all of this. And so Kisan has different committees. We have um budget and finance committee, which I'm mature. Okay. And then we also have um, health mission committee of okay. course dr catherine takem is the chair and my sister here mrs comfort opinion is also the board member she's in charge of the liaison uh, coordinating between a school board and the general Akisan members okay so i'll okay. take a pause here for now but <laughs> right. this is the chairperson <laughs> that we want to address the health mission committee all right. all right all right quite um you know clear quite clear we get your message with all um clarity now let's get to um mrs equinion um I remember a story in the Bible where um, it talked about um, a king who called out people to his um, party and then not so many people attended so he said get into the streets mm -hmm. call people mm -hmm. now what what is the risk what was the response like how long did the mission for 2022 last and then what was the response like well, thank you very much, Ms. Percy. Um, before I talk about the response, so let me mention this, that uh, when I was growing up, uh, my dad was always saying that uh, compared to going to America, to going to Panya, mm. whatever mm. that is, Equatorial Guinea, you know, people go out and some of them get lost and some of them come back. So I want to just give kudos to us going there and not forgetting our people to come back right. and give back. So, right. but anyway, I was um, able to be in the three locations, you know, that we provided help to the community. So uh, people were elated. Um, I want to give kudos also to the um, the local government chair, Barista Onuk, that uh, really, really was a uh, pioneer in really opting up the care in his community. Uh, a lot of uh, people came out. They were very happy because most of them cannot afford, you know, the medical care, you know, the money that is involved, the transportation, you know. So in Iran and uh, Urumuka, um the local government people were very happy to come out and get the much needed help that was provided to them okay yes, and the mission lasted from when to uh, when? from monday we started on monday through yesterday okay. you know so people were very happy to be there you know okay. getting the help okay you were in um Itu, Uran, and then um, Uru 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 the people from the environs come out as well. Yes, ma'am, they did. And um, their local government chair people also, you know, were very much represented in the mission. You know, they were very helpful. They rendered the care, you know, and the financial support. You know, most of them were there from okay. day one, you okay. know, to the end. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay, let me get back to the chairperson of the medical mission. You know, as a non-profit um, association, how do you get funding for this mission, for instance? As the treasurer has just rightly mentioned, we do have um, annual uh, celebrations and fundraising in uh, the United States where we uh, are fundraise for projects. And this year we fundraised, we fundraised for this medical mission, but there's not enough money at any one level at any one time. Okay. So we had to collaborate with the different um, organizations and entities. And of course, we had to work with the um, the community, the chairperson of each of those communities. Um, we had help from uh, a doctor, Victor Jackson, who provided us with some medications. We had help from the uh, different uh, chair, uh, chairmen, um, as my colleagues rightly said, and individuals such as our board chair also um, uh, scooped in some funds for this project. His name is Bobby Onofio. And I could, we could never have sat down in America and planned this 
without the help of Dr. Titus Anti, who resides in our back. Um, it was, it, it took a lot of planning, it took about, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, period of the COVID took us um, all that planning period okay. to be able to effect this um, project in itself. Okay, all right. Now to the treasurer. Um, previous years, um, Akisan has always, um, you know, um, conducted this medical mission. What has always been the outcome? Well, the outcome has been very impressive. That is why we keep doing it. And it has also been very impactful like we talk we, when we come in, we just wish we could stay longer but we have to go back because we left our families um it's a free medical mission even though it's free we generate funds but we the volunteers we pay our fees down here so we leave, left our jobs our families to come here and provide care okay. so it's been very impactful and we'll keep doing it but can we do better? Yes. The answer is yes. If we have a lot of partners, collaboration in the past, the state government have been supporting us okay. very immensely. And we are happy to have that support. And we look for more, even more support from the government of Aquaibum State. Okay. If we can even get support from other states, we don't, uh, we wouldn't refuse. So it's been a very impactful exercise, but sadly everything that has a beginning must have an ending. And so we were not happy, the people that we couldn't really reach mm. yesterday, but we had to come to an end at, as at this year. Okay. We hope to come back next year okay. and do even more. Okay. I'll get to ask the chairperson quite soon about, you know, the outcome for this year's mission. But let me find out what informed the choice of um, the three local government areas, the um, E2, Uran, and then Orokoko. Excuse me. What informed the choice of the three local government areas? We have other local governments in Akwaibom. Mm -hmm. Why E2, Uran, okay. and then um, Orokoko? Thank you. Um, we cannot just do all of them at the same time. There is no way we have enough resources to cater to everybody at the same time. So we have to choose, you know, um, we have to be able to have enough, well, not enough, as you have rightly heard, uh, you know, but we had to choose at a time, you know, how many that we do at a certain mission. So maybe next time when we come, it, it will probably not be to Uran or okay. uh, Urumuka. Okay. We probably will go to other centers okay. that did not have opportunity to enjoy it this time. Okay. Yes, I, I will have to okay. uh, add to that okay. point that uh, over the years we've done a lot of missions in different local government areas. These are areas that we have never touched. No. So our decision to go to these places also was influenced by the fact that we had not been to these places already okay. in the 35 years. And there are still so many <coughs> other places that we are yet to reach, and our intent is to reach every one of them. And yes, we uh, could have gone to the different cities uh, in the state, but our intent is to reach the people in the rural areas, so we wanted to bring the, the, the uh, treatment to those people who could not and cannot make their way to the different uh, hospitals in the cities. Okay. And this is uh, this are some of the decision making that the committee makes okay. and decides to come to those places. Okay. Now, in the past five days, what kind of services were rendered to the people? We had, um, uh, of course, um, uh, uh, beginning with uh, a prayer session and everything has to be committed to God. So we have uh, uh, devotion po uh, uh, sessions and while the crowd is waiting we have um, uh, educational moments where we know that one of our uh, our, our truly good sister um, gives health talks okay. and all the different centers had health talks okay. the, the pattern took the same um, format uh, as in all the um, project sites um, and as the uh, the day progresses along we have the general uh, uh, medication medical needs 
of people who come with um, all kinds of chronic illnesses and they are seen by the consultants and those people who eventually need surgical pro uh, processes are also processed in the lab and some of them get to get medications from the pharmacy and um, the, pro the uh, surgical procedures are now then processed and surgically intervened at the end of each of the um, period depending on their needs of the in the needs of the individual okay so um so surgical um operations were carried out in the course of this mission mm -hmm. as well yes yes, yes. yes. okay what i forgot to mention also was the uh, optical part of it okay we also, quite a lot of yeah that. we yeah. also um did a, a um optometry uh, and gave out glasses unfortunately we didn't have enough fundings to do uh, cataract surgeries in this particular okay. mm -hmm. uh, in in the past and hopefully in the future we'll be able to include that in our uh, treatment plan okay. yes surgical um, procedures were performed and um, we had about 51 surgeries in Itu we had wow. about 50 in Uran and about 45 in uh, Urumuko uh, a total of 40, 146 uh, surgical procedures we also gave out um, a total of 2,250 glasses to the individuals in this particular project. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Now, um, do we do? Did you have um, volunteers or did you have medical um, professionals mm -hmm. br from Nigeria participate in this mission? Yes. Like I said, um, we, this could have never happened without Dr. Titus Ante. Okay. He was my ground man okay he performed miracles and i have to give kudos to him he coordinated the um the medical professionals here as a matter of fact all the expertise most of the expertise that we had were people from aquabo that okay. we put together and put their knowledge and their um their uh techniques together all the medications we purchased right here in nigeria all the um eyeglasses we got from here in Nigeria. Our intent is to boost up the economy of our state yes. and help uh, influence uh, the capacities of our professionals. All the uh, professionals, the nurses, mm -hmm. the laboratory people, the, the scrub people, the uh, whoever were all from Aquabo okay. here in Nigeria. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Now, um, thankfully, um, we, we had people from here um, participate in the exercise, you know, as um, key players. Now, the aftermath of, um, for instance, the surgeries, follow up. Um, let me ask um, Mrs. Zipenyo, yes. follow up now for this time around. Uh, what's going to happen? Because I know for sure that some surgeries, for instance, will need follow up. What preparations are on ground, are on ground for that? Well, as. Um our board treasurer said uh, every good thing came to an end we have to leave but here they have to stay um, we encourage the health centers they the staying open okay. you know to receive them whatever medications the classes whatever we provided to them are all left on ground so that those will be used until it's used up okay. so um, we've also uh, let them know to follow up with the hospitals, with their primary care physicians, you know, that can go on forward with them, you know. So hopefully, if they still have those ailments, by the time we come back next year, you know, we will also follow up. So all the doctors that were used uh, as the board chair, as the chairs, chairperson for the medical mission said, they are on ground also, okay. you know, they're here. Okay. So uh, follow up will be hopefully easy. You know, we advise them not to go to the um, uh, the local doctors instead of running to the hospital for them to please, you know, follow up with the people that treated them in the health centers okay. so they're not misguided. Okay. 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 And, um, for every surgical procedure, uh, the doctors, the surgeon, uh, provides nurses phone numbers, their phone numbers. And in order to recover them, we had nurses stay overnight to stay and recover them until the doctors 
until the doctors released them. Okay. Gave them prescription medications to go home with in order to get treatment. Now, the follow-up and the, um, the recovery is now between the patients, the nurses, and the doctors who are physically here in Aquabo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, I want to add to that, uh, for each center, it Uran and uh, Udongoko, we have those doctors, we told the patients, you have to go back there for your follow-up. Mm -hmm. Like the chair said, the, these numbers have been given to them. But are we sure everyone would follow up? The answer is no. Because you can take the camel to the stream, mm. but you cannot force that camel to drink. We know that many people are not compliant. So in my health education, I stress the importance of compliance. Okay. And I also stress the importance of nutrition. We brought in nutrition wow. because you can take whatever medications, but if you don't eat right, then it's not going to really impact you positively. Okay. So we told them, yes, these are the kinds of food to eat. And this, you take your medications, you need to drink water. And then after so, so the four or five days, as they were told, depending on each um, surgical condition or situation okay. or procedure that was carried out, you need to come back in four days, five days to see the doctor or for the stitches to be removed. But if they do not go, there is no way. Maybe what we will also include next time because there's always lessons to learn mm. at every time, would be tracking ways we can track okay. these people in okay. case they default. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That would be wonderful. Now, to the, chair, to, to the chairperson of the uh, mission, um, did you have any challenges, you mm. know, in the course of um, carrying out this mission? I had a lot of challenges. It all started with the planning phase. Again, the, uh, the uh, cooperation of the uh, community leaders okay. to buy into the uh, project. Um, I'm not going to say that um, it they came through in the end. However, um, people were suspicious. Um, a, a, a certain uh, chairman said he's people to go to the uh, Ministry of Health to confirm that okay. this indeed was uh, <laughs> a, a legitimate uh, uh, a project that was coming in because uh, obviously we have to get permission from the Ministry of Health okay. committee uh, leaders to be able to uh, effect this project. A lot of the challenges um, were mostly of the fact that they were not trustful of us at the beginning um, but as time went on the first and second day, we proved ourselves, and they became really, really excited to be um, partner uh, to be partners with us. And um, other than that, there's nothing that goes flawlessly. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you you learn from these uh, uh, bridges, and you you walk across those bridges when you get to the other end you are excited that it all came together okay. we're uh, very very excited about this project okay all right you you love to add to that yes i wanted to <laughs> add to the challenges because uh, i am actually a, a mental health professional okay um there were not enough community resources you know available here Okay. you know to refer these people to so it's one thing taking medication for you know the ailment is another thing too when you are worried you know you do not have food you do not you cannot mm. pay you cannot even buy the food you know we're talking about nutrition mm. so there's so many challenges still ahead of us to be able to overcome okay. and so um, I would just appeal you know to the state government, you know, um, hopefully we can have, you know, social, you know, um, things going on for the people to okay. take advantage of, you know, so um, I was frustrated personally because I didn't do much for the people as they're supposed to, you know, have been helped in that aspect of it, so hopefully yeah. okay. it will.
Okay. So yeah. to I have okay. to add to what she just said, um, the challenges. Um, I came across a lot of um, patients or clients who came through and somebody came the very first day like on Monday and she was supposed to come back Tuesday but she didn't show up until Thursday. Reason? Challenges. She didn't have money mm. to pay transport. Another person came on Tuesday. She was asked to come back Wednesday. She didn't show up until yesterday when we were packing ready to go. So transportation would be another very important. Some patients are willing to go back. We just talked about follow-up. Yes, yes. They are willing to go back, but they don't have even a little amount of money to pay transport to take them from one place to the other. So if we can have all these social amenities, I mean provided, yes, government cannot do everything. So we call on even the private individuals, mm -hmm. organizations to come to help. At least Akisana, we've come here to do medical mission. Mm -hmm. We know other organizations also help in this aspect. But if we should come in here and there, transportation, um, provide mm -hmm. resources so that if someone has a problem, like in the U.S., if you are depressed or you, have, you think of suicide, what is the hotline number? that you can call that would guide you mm -hmm. and i mean you, something to escalate you know call on that will provide the immediate need at that time yeah. okay. and then later on ongoing that would be very helpful yeah. and then she the chair also mentioned um some people were not non-receptive maybe doubting mm. that okay maybe this is another scam well, we don't blame them because in Nigeria everything is about scam, scam, scam. <laughs> yeah. So and then even people who come from other countries to scam the people to, and mean add to the scam that we were already entitled or knew about. Yes. Yeah. So, I, I don't blame them. But when you see professionals coming to seek for partnership. Like we said, we finish in three local government areas. We will go into more local government areas next year and so on and so forth. Okay. So we would like to call on the chairman, chairwomen of those communities or local government areas to be open-minded, to be receptive, mm -hmm. to help. If we can bring our time, skills, and then leave our families, I mean, to come and service those communities, mm. is actually in the end, kudos to the chairman and chairwomen of those local government areas. So we want them to partner with us to help um, save the people. Okay. Because good health, with good health, mm. they become good citizens. And you, Miss Mercy, too, in the media, if That's you can right. also help, we do help, you know, to put the words out there to people, right. you know, even in the radio, too, because most of them cannot afford TV. So to listen to what we are talking about right now, but in the radio form yes. too, they can listen to it and the words kind of like go a long way, That's right. you know, too. Okay. So please okay. help us like to put the words. Like we did you know, that the medical yeah. mission is ongoing. Yes, yeah, you know, yes. That, yes. that was good. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you for all that. Right. Yeah. Okay, so um, you are all residents in the United States where um, um, we would say is a lot developed, you know. Um, comparing let me not even talk about the basis of comparison but what do you feel can be done to to our health system back here at home so we can um, have better health system compared to what we have in other developed climates I'm not sure uh, as to how to answer that question because there's no one particular comparison uh, patients. What what could clients, you recommend? Clients mm. in the whole world, as a matter of fact, um, respond the same way to health because if they are worrying about paying the next bill, they would rather pay money for food than mm. pay money for medication. Mm. It's all the same everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. um, recommendation will be to for instance have a standard health care well equipped with staff and resources at the very uh, uh, health centers where the people at that they can walk in and get treatment even if it's for a headache 
I remember in, in the eighties when I used to live in Lagos, the uh, community health centers there were free, and I people could go in there freely to get medications and not worry about paying a card to register, mm. paying for medication, paying to go buy uh, IV fluid. Those are some of the things that should come natural in the health centers if well equipped, well serviced. Those will be, that will be the beginning. And then people will begin to trust that this medication that you're giving to me indeed will not hurt me worse than the church. Because I've seen people who have health needs go to pray Meanwhile, the abscess is growing and getting bigger, mm. or the blood pressure is getting higher and higher and higher. Now, if we had standards, uh, um, our utilities set up and waiting for them, we can encourage that compliance. It's the same everywhere, be it in America or in Nigeria. But we have to put something in place for them to uh, attain. Okay. We're not, com we're not um, condemning the prayer because you actually do need that. Mm. Uh, but um, they need to know where to go get what. Our spiritual needs is, is very, very essential. But they need to know that when something needs to be dealt with medically, they also do need to seek that. And also, too, if our lawmakers would put more effort into developing the local aspect of it instead of running to overseas to go get their own help and think more about the people here that would also you know really okay. help okay and then um the place of um health care insurance um I, i'm sure you enjoy <laughs> lots of that yes. what would you recommend in that aspect well uh, uh, number one like in the in america you said earlier a developed country a uh, room was not built in a day it small steps you know yeah so we have insurance in nigeria that is covered and even the less privileged also they do get some coverage from government is called medical so okay. in, okay. yes and medicaid okay. so here if our government and when i'm talking about here nigeria as a whole and then in particular acquirable state if there is something that is put in place for the less privileged to reassure them that yes you can go to hospital or clinic to get this care without having to worry about payment i mean that would help the people and maybe help change their mindset okay let me go get uh, the help first okay. before i go to church so i tell people it's good to go to church but get the medical help while they are praying in the church so that way your faith with the medication with the medical attention put together will work for you so if we have a situation in place that you go in or somebody walks in in an emergency, we have urgent care and emergency room, you walk in with an emergency situation and you're not bothered about pay. Mm. And that problem is getting worse, worse, worse by the day, you know, but that patient is not seen. But in America, you are first taken care of before then we'll talk about your bills and insurance later on so if we have something in place for the less privileged and yes i said earlier government cannot do all of this by themselves so even we have the rich and wealthy people in nigeria in acquirable state if they come up with some donation to the system it will help to put something like that in place okay. that will help the masses okay and what i see also as a <laughs> as a, a professional in the mental health you know there is um in a in america a place like we live there's a, a rich people the poor people and there's something called He's middle black. class in in nigeria the way i see it is only either you are rich or you are poor there so is why no, that gap? you know there is yeah. no middle ground for common people so if they can also you know for people that do have jobs the government you know the private 
industries, they can also put something in place for even the workers that work with them to help out, you know, subsidize. You know, as my sister was talking about earlier, you know, the, the, the project of keeping something in the pool for the less privileged people, that, you know, that's extra from what I'm talking about. Right. You know, so there's a difference between that. So that at least if you know that you work for a radio station, you know, you do have something that can step in and help you as a worker, you know, some kind of insurance to help out pay for those bills, That's right. you know, so okay. that would help. All right. My next question will be about how you feel about the 2022 uh, medical mission. But before that, let's um, get to take a listen at some of the beneficiaries and, of course, the local government council chairman for the three um, um, local governments that you went to. Let's get to take a listen at um, some of the things they had to say about the mission. Giving back life to those who are going home. So I want to sincerely thank the design people. This is the investment. Investment that all depends on the amount of wealth that you have. But the amount that you have invested in the lives of others. Thank you, design people. I want to thank you. Providing qualitative health care for our people is one of the turn point agenda. Now that this thing has come to stay, I am praying God that then it will continue to be an annual event like the experience we've had this time around. On behalf of the people, I just want to say thank you so very much. I'm very happy with the uh, name the government. They declare that the paramount will not just to lose the local government. Oh, this thing should be this. Good enough that you were doing that. The chairman of the council of the world that so much has spent so much for nomination. And it was allowed by the paramount ruler. Can you allow it? Even though. Thank you, sir. I comment very effectively on the position of Akisan towards this uh, program. I really thank them for the, for the love they have for wrong public. And it's happening uh, to me in the country. And I'm here to witness it. So what is the significance of this three medical services? It's the relief to my administration as a council uh, chairman. You see, a lot of people have been coming to me for medical uh, assistance. But I give them money to pay reading whenever I want to read a heart issue. But after the, uh, the test, they provide me with the classes. I'm comfortable now. I want to say thank you for them. And God will bless them. I mean, thank you for having me. So, I mean, it's going to have a money to come to your glass. I mean, I'm going to do that. And you can bend your neck with it. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to have a good time. I am so excited, so overwhelmed. Having seen what the artisan have done. Okay. From the beneficiaries of that medical mission that was concluded yesterday and of course we've had um, the uh, chair press the chairman of each of the local government as e2 uran and Urunko, also made their submissions at the conclusion of this medical mission how do you feel first of all i am tired <laughs> and i am excited that it's over <laughs> giving me a period to rest um, there's never a time that I go for any project that I don't feel um, elated. I don't. I feel like what God has resourced me to do, I'm doing it one day at a time through the medical mission projects. Um, uh, I am happy that my grandfather will be happy with me. He's late. He had told me when I was going to America that I was going to a market and that when you go to the market, you must come back home. And I come back home every year to do this project. And this is me fulfilling that promise. So I am excited that it's over uh, for now, but I'm also happy to know of the people that have been impacted 
and that have received even if it was just a cup of water that they got but that they had been touched by our project okay this is a poem you know I am excited um, that uh, I will I am I've been a part of this mission for this year um, it gave me great joy you know to give back um, being the the hand of God here on earth you know that's what he desires that we all do is um, be a blessing that's actually why I think I am blessed to give back to be a blessing okay. you know so um, very happy very fulfilled that I've been able to do that and people are overjoyed with the help that they, we've been able to provide for them so okay. to God be the glory okay and I know um, mrs. Uh, Itawan is equally Yes, you were excited. Yes, you, yes. you, I believe you were happy yes. uh, that it ended well. Yes, now, I feel fulfilled. Okay, too. okay. Yes. I would love to know, and I'm sure quite some people also love to know. I'm sure they're asking, "Oh, why be that me day when? Maybe when day when?" That's the question for you. Yes. Um, people <laughs> song But yes, okay. I need a cop. In the meeting, President, I get a mystic to rock any court. And we have a board chair, um, Engineer Bobby on off you. Then we have council, um, chapter president, council of chapter okay. president, and we have the speaker. I mean, we need a speaker again, wow. organization, you know. <laughs> We have the speaker, <laughs> engineer, Dr. Uh, Ekiko. Okay. And uh, of course, um, we will go back and sit down, then review okay. what we have done. Mm -hmm. And then we, when we meet again, we a council meeting coming up in November. And that's when we will decide, yes, Kia Inam, the next project. But as a committee, we are looking at next year. But the decision is when we get back and based on how much we get from donors. We task ourselves, mm -hmm. even we individually, mm -hmm. yeah, we donate to the organization mm -hmm. also. So we're looking for help donors. Mm -hmm. uh, the more money that we get, mm -hmm. that would make us come back mm -hmm. soon. Okay. And I want to assure the people of Akwa Ibom State, assure the world, global world, that Akisan, things have changed. We no longer do business the way we used to. Mm. Things have changed. There is transparency, accountability. So if you donate to Akisan, you can donate mm. your time, money, resources, mm. anything. Mm. If you donate, it's going to be put to good use. Mm. So I'm here speaking on behalf of Mr. Toro Apanik, what? <laughs> the organization. <laughs> that yes, because we are doing so many things here. In Aquaibom State. Right. This past May, we came and gave um, scholarship That's to right. students in university. Mm -hmm. We are coming back next year to do that. And then we are also ICT uh, training is ongoing. Mm -hmm. So please donate to Akisan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, mm -hmm. we're planning to come back next year. Mm -hmm. But the only hindrance or challenge are you doing in many other calls? <laughs> mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. the state government also can create and put a budget in place to help us to mm -hmm. come back even sooner, you know, that is still, you know, okay. will be appreciated. All right. Okay, I believe I'll be speaking um, the mind of Aquaiban people when I say thank you very much to Akisan. You have done um, greatly, you know, impacting lives in, diff in different sectors, different yes. facets, education, health. Thank you so much for all you do. You. Um, we are very, very happy with you and um, we wish you more grace to continue to, you know, touch lives. Yes, We've thank been blessed. you. All right. This is where we draw the curtains on Flight M45 this morning. I've had with me some members of the Aquibum State Association of Nigeria, Akisan USA Incorporated. They were here. They've been here in Aquibum. And um, for the medical mission, it began on Monday and ended just yesterday, 
Friday in three local government areas. I'm sure um, not just people from that local go those local government, but people from the environs also benefited from their medical mission. So thank you so much to them. Thank you to you having been part of this program this morning. Remember to join us next week for another exciting package. My name is Mercy Ikeri. Do have a beautiful weekend. Good morning. Channel 45, ultimate in the